Plastics are all around us. All of us use plastics on a daily basis. It's a convenient material which brings many benefits. Let us have a look at this hummus pot. Plastic packaging is protecting the food. It increases shelf life. It's a material which can take many forms. You've got a rigid lid and there's a flexible film. And it's light which means that transport can be done using less fuel and emitting fewer, fewer greenhouse gases, which is better for the environment. However, the way we currently make and use plastics has some important shortcomings. Let us go back to the hummus pot and dig in. I take off the rigid lid and peel back the flexible film, and I can indulge. And I like hummus a lot. But I always wonder what to do with the packaging afterwards. Or shall I rather say, in this case, what to do with the different packaging items afterwards. Given that we've got a rigid lid, a flexible film torn apart, and we've got a rigid pot with some leftover hummus stuck on the inside. I would like to do something positive with it, like recycling. But it's unclear how that should happen, or whether that's possible at all. Here's another example. Clearly, the wrapper is protecting the sweet. But what's going to happen with it afterwards? Let's assume for a second that the wind hasn't blown it away and the wrapper makes it to the rubbish bin. Still then, it's most likely going to end up in some landfill or being burned. Again, you may want to do good, but the current system just doesn't allow you to. And this... I find frustrating. I work for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is a charity that aims to inspire a generation to rethink, redesign and build a positive future through a circular economy. Recognizing these shortcomings, we were convinced that there must be a better way to go about making, using and reusing plastics. So, as a first step towards a better alternative, we started looking into plastic packaging in detail. We figured out that of all plastic packaging put on the market globally, only a small share gets collected for recycling. Our analysis shows only 14%. And an even smaller share gets actually recycled in a closed loop way, which means, for example, turning a beverage bottle like that one into another beverage bottle. This 2% is surprisingly low given decades of recycling efforts worldwide. And we also discovered that a staggering one-third of plastic packaging escapes collection systems and leaks into the environment after being used only once. Taking a step back, the current plastics economy is what we call a take, make, dispose system. It is taking resources, making something out of it, and disposing of it. And such a one-way system has some important drawbacks. One of them is that we're losing a lot of money. Every year, we lose in between 80 and 120 billion US dollars as we do not succeed in capturing the value of plastic packaging material after we've used it only once. Also, since most plastics are made out of oil, we're consuming more and more of this limited resource and meanwhile emitting greenhouse gases. And there's more. Every year, at least 8 million tons of plastics leak into the ocean. That's the equivalent of dumping a garbage truck full of plastics into the ocean every minute. And I'm not just talking about large pieces of plastics here. I'm also talking about tiny particles, microplastics, which get ingested by plankton and other sea life. If you don't do anything, this could be the result. By 2050, there could be more plastics than fish in our oceans by weight. 
For me, this insight was a clear wake-up call. Yes, I knew before that the current plastics economy isn't perfect, but I never realized that just continuing as usual could have such a tremendous impact. Back then, our research made already one point very clear. We have to take action. And people are taking action. There are fantastic initiatives out there trying to reduce the negative impact of plastics. However, that also begs the question, is there a positive way out of this? We believe there is. Based on our understanding of how it's currently going, we created a positive vision of a system that works. We called it, in a moment of intense creativity, the new plastics economy. <laughs> it's a bold vision, rethinking the future of plastics in line with circular economy principles. We completely redesigned the way we make, use and reuse plastics to ensure that this valuable material stays in our economy and out of the ocean. In this way, we achieve better economic and environmental outcomes while retaining the benefits of plastics we see nowadays. Our vision explains how everyone involved, from the plastics designer to the recycler, has an important role to play. Obviously, creating such a vision is a step in the right direction, but it's not enough. We also need action. That's why last year we launched an initiative to move towards this new plastics economy, aiming to overcome the limitations of fragmented action. It, it takes an explicitly collaborative approach, and we involve business, policymakers, NGOs, but also academics and the wider public. And one of our key insights so far is that having a positive, ambitious vision is crucial for successful action. And this is why. First of all, a vision brings people around the same table. Plastic packaging is part of a global, complex setup involving many people, such as polymer chemists, packaging producers, designers and marketers working for brands and retailers, but also officers at municipalities and people working for recyclers and waste management companies. And no single one of them no single organization or company can move an entire economy on their own. So we'll have to collaborate. We'll have to break the stalemate and set new rules of the game together. By bringing all those people around the same table for the first time, we learned how sharing a powerful vision of the future can lead to action. Another way a vision leads to successful action is by setting direction for innovation. To move an entire economy, you need big leaps forward, as offered by innovation. Looking at plastics, though, in the past, too often this innovation focused on a limited set of parameters, such as a certain barrier property or a specific look and feel of the packaging. And in this way, the progress made did not necessarily fit into the wider picture. So whether we're talking about the packaging design or the materials used, the business models or the technologies involved, a vision can guide future innovation. It can act as a lighthouse. Soon, we are going to launch two innovation challenges that fit within our wider vision. One of them is about small format plastic packaging, like the sweet wrapper, convenient but prone to leaking into the environment. The other one is about one of the most challenging plastic packaging segments out there, multi-material film. It's a type of packaging that's used for crisp packets. Ideal to keep food fresh, but very hard to recycle. And then finally, a vision can lead to successful action <coughs> as it informs tangible next steps. Yes, we need big leaps forward, but small steps are as important. A vision can help you to decide whether to go left or right. It can act as a roadmap. We used our vision to create an action plan for the global plastic packaging supply chain and published it at the World Economic Forum last January. At the same time, we launched the Circular Design Guide, an online reference point with practical methods to help designers and change makers 
develop solutions for the circular economy. Another example of how a vision can inform tangible next steps. So, what does this mean for you? Whether you're a student or a professional, you may be working in the near future for an organization or a company which is part of a larger system, a larger industry. And quite likely, this industry will bring many benefits. But at the same time, you may notice some shortcomings, just like we did with plastics. At that moment, I invite you to do more than just use less. You can reinvent the future of our economy. By rethinking the current model, you can create a positive, ambitious vision of a system that works. And as we've seen, such a vision is a first step towards a better future. With the new plastics economy, we are on the brink of reinventing the future of plastics. Now, it's your turn. <laughs>